Uh, would like to encourage you to have the uh, insert in your hands if you have one. Uh, anybody that doesn't have one, you're going to need one. Okay, Leo, could you pass out to whoever still needs one? It's it's, stupid. it's it's not in there. Okay. <laughs> it's it's for at the end of the sermon. All right. So have that in your. They have one. Okay. Okay. No, this. At the end of the term. At the end of the term. Okay. All right. Our text from John chapter 9, the gospel reading in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you recall these words? When you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. Genesis. Genesis 3 verses 4 and 5. And then verse 7. The eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. To have opened eyes in that way is not a good thing. It means to know the way of the world, to see harsh reality, to recognize the cruel patterns of life in a sin-filled world. That all began when Adam and Eve sought to open their own eyes, but doing so by disobeying God. The event we read in today's gospel, a man born blind is given sight. Blindness was common in the world of that time, still is in many parts of the world today where poverty limits personal hygiene. Blindness is common in those conditions because of infections. Do you know that the gospel records more healings of people of blind people by Jesus than any other specific type of healing. Healing of the blind is unique to Jesus. Some of the prophets raised the dead, like Elijah did the widow's son at Zarephath, but the Old Testament has no record, zero, of a prophet healing the blind. The prophets do foretell that healing the blind would be a sign of the Messiah, maybe the sign of the Messiah. In the rest of the New Testament, there are no records of Jesus' disciples healing the blind. One account you may bring to mind is the account of Ananias restoring sight to Saul, who would be Paul, after his conversion at Damascus. But scholars put that in a different category altogether because apparently it's a blindness brought about by Jesus confronting Saul and then Jesus removes it through Ananias. It is not a run-of-the-mill blind person being restored their sight. And the specific event in today's gospel is the most unique healing of all. The man himself claims nobody Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. While medicines of the day might possibly help a person who had an eye infection or injury, this man had been blind all his life. Perhaps a congenital defect. Something was missing from his eyes or his optic nerve or in his brain. So Jesus doesn't merely heal this man. He makes something that had never been. That's called creation. <laughs> Some see Jesus' use of mud as a symbol of this new creation, like God forming man from the dust in Genesis 2. After receiving sight, the man goes home. What that trip must have been. For a person who knew his way through the city of Jerusalem by memorized touches and 
memorized steps, or otherwise led by the hands and eyes of others, to be walking and seeing his surroundings for the first time. What amazement, what joy, what a flood of emotions and thoughts. But as soon as he arrives home, the Inquisition begins. First he's questioned by his neighbors and other acquaintances. Was this the same man? And they were divided. I am the man, he declares. Then they take him to the religious authorities, the Pharisees. How did this happen to you? He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. And now the Pharisees are divided. Some say that since Jesus didn't obey the Sabbath law about not working, you know, making mud and healing was work. <laughs> since he didn't obey the Sabbath law, Jesus could not be from God. Others, perhaps only a few, since it seems this is the only time they speak up, ask, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? In other words, maybe they're saying Jesus might be something special. But that doesn't last long. Notice how the focus has turned from the miracle itself to who Jesus is. And that's rightly the heart of the question. That's the point of all miracles, who Jesus is. But they miss the right answer. They ask the man, what do you say about him? He's a prophet, the healed one replies. Now the Inquisition turns to the parents. <clears throat> Is this true? Is he really your son? Was he truly blind from birth? And how is he able to see now? Yes, he's our son. Yes, he's been blind since he was born. But no, we don't know how he can see. He's an adult. Ask him. They were afraid to say anymore. The word was out. The Pharisees were out to get Jesus and anyone who was with him. So the Inquisition goes back to the man again. The Pharisees say, give God the glory. That might mean you better tell the truth now. We know this other guy is a sinner. In other words, we know he didn't do this. And the man says, I don't know if he's a sinner, but I know for sure that I was blind and now I see. What did he do? How did he open your eyes? And he replies probably with a note of sarcasm. I already told you. And then he says, weren't you listening? Which in, in Greek, uh, I think can also come out as, don't your ears work? <laughs> Do you want to be his disciples too? And that really stirs them up. We are disciples of Moses. We know Moses' words are from God, but this guy, we don't know where he comes from. And the man says, now that really is a marvel. You don't know where he comes from, but he opened my eyes. If he weren't from God, he could do nothing. He seems to say that their unbelief is more miraculous than his own cure. What a simple but beautiful confession of faith. You are soaked in sin. Get out, they say. And here we have possibly the first person to be persecuted for following the Christ. Now Jesus finds the man again and pours out his grace again. Jesus asks, do you believe in the Son of Man? And we should know that the Son of Man is a phrase from uh, Ezekiel, I believe, that uh, refers to the Messiah. The newly sighted man says, please tell me who he is. Jesus says, he's the one you see now. And the man says, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped, which means he bowed down at Jesus' feet. Jesus has given this man a twofold blessing, twofold healing, twofold sight. Both his physical and his spiritual eyes were opened that day. 
It's interesting to observe this man's view of Jesus throughout the story. First, he calls Jesus the man. Then he says Jesus is a prophet. Next, he declares that Jesus must be a man from God. And finally, he confesses that Jesus is Lord. That's the power of God's word at work. While we rejoice in the sight and faith that Jesus gives to this man, there's also a dark side we see, a vision of judgment, where good news brings healing and sight, both physical and spiritual. There will also be rejection and unbelief. Jesus declares that those who think they can see, in other words, those who think they don't need his light, will become blind. They had knowledge of the Old Testament scriptures, but they refused to recognize Jesus as the one promised there. If any of us think we can see God without the gift of Jesus, the same guilt would remain on us. For many years, the ancient church in Rome worshiped in underground burial tunnels, catacombs, they're called. They worshiped there to escape persecution during those years. There are catacomb paintings that picture Jesus healing the man born blind as a symbol of holy baptism. An early church leader, Tertullian, said, Happy is the sacrament of our water in that by washing away the sins of our early blindness, we are set free unto eternal life. So the healing of the man born blind is a symbol of holy baptism. He opened my eyes, eyes of faith. Did God do it? Or did you decide on your own to believe in Jesus? Holy scriptures show that God is the one doing the work, both in this miracle and in the work of holy baptism. He opened my eyes. What will you say? Will you tell others about the great physician of body and soul or try to discredit the miracle of faith? He opened my eyes. When we try to open our own eyes, we end up in sin and shame like Adam and Eve. When Jesus opens our eyes with his gentle but all-powerful mercy, we see clearly forgiveness, salvation, life everlasting. Since he has opened our eyes, I would ask you to take the insert today and look at the bottom of the front page where it says gradual. Uh, the gradual is a reading that comes between the uh, epistle and gospel reading. It's, it's one that I don't regularly used, but I probably should. But let's read the gradual from Hebrews 12. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us fix our eyes only on Jesus, because he's the one who has opened them for us. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in this Christ Jesus. Amen.